What is up everybody? This is Mark from PCClassesOnline.com. If you own a Mac, you may or may not know how quick and powerful the Spotlight tool can actually be. But today I'm going to show you 10 things that Spotlight can do and a few extra tips for customizing it to make it work the way that you want it to. But before we get started, I want to show you two ways to open Spotlight. Now the first one you probably already know, and that's going to the top right corner and clicking on the magnifying glass. But I think there's a faster way. And that's to click Command and Space together, and that opens up Spotlight right there from wherever you are. And I think it's a lot faster than moving your mouse to the top right corner. So let's jump into today's list. Number one, find and open applications quickly. Now, sure, you can go down to your dock or you can four finger pinch to go to Launchpad, but I don't keep everything I use in my dock, and I bet your Launchpad is probably as disorganized as mine is. So Spotlight can get you to any application much faster. For example, if I want to open GarageBand, I just start typing and then hit enter. Or if I'd like to open Photoshop, all I have to do is start typing and hit enter. It's a lot faster than searching your computer to try to find where you stored that application. Trick number two, finding files or folders. I cannot tell you how many times I forget where I put a file or a folder, but all I have to do is type into Spotlight and it finds it right away. For example, if I'm looking for a client I'm working with called Spartan, all I have to do is type it in and it brings up folders or files with the name Spartan. Or if I want to find this particular class graphic that I've made here, all I have to do is type in 10 tricks Mac and it pulls it right up. Tip number three, pulling up a particular type or kind of file. For example, let's say I'm looking for the logo of a particular client and I remember the name of the client but I can't remember where I put the file. So all I need to do is type kind and then image to tell it that I only want to pull up images and then start typing in the name of the client. And right here, the PNG that I'm looking for comes right up. You can search for all kinds of things, including apps or contacts, folders, emails, events, reminders, music, and more. So be sure to check out that link. Trick number four, information about or directions to a particular place. Let's say I want to go to the historic Brady Theater here in downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. All I've got to do is type in Brady Theater. And it brings up not only a map, but it also brings up the phone number, the website, address. I can even click on directions to here or directions from here. Shows the hours and all kinds of things. I can also click on Ticketmaster to buy tickets to events that are at the Brady Theater. And there's even a Wikipedia page for the Brady Theater. Let's say I want to find my closest Apple Store. All I've got to do is type in Apple Store. And in just a moment, it brings up the closest Apple Store to me, which in this case is at Woodland Hills Mall. And it shows the phone number there. And if I scroll down just a little bit, I can also click on Maps. And it shows me a map. And again, directions to here, from here, hours, and so on. Now, tip number five is one of my favorite ones because it's all about pulling up information about your favorite movies. So let's say I want to go see the latest Mission Impossible movie that's showing right now, and I want to find out where it's showing close to me. So all i got to do is type in Mission Impossible, and in just a moment, it pulls up Mission Impossible Rogue Nation from Fandango, and it shows that it's uh, playing at five theaters near me. It gives me a plot summary cast and crew. I can pull up uh, a website or IMDB information. I can even look for music from the movie on iTunes. It's really, really great. So all you do is type in a movie and it pulls up all the information you need about that movie. The next trick I want to show you that Spotlight can do is quick math problems. For example, let's say that something's on sale and it's like 25% off and you can't do it really quickly in your head. So for example, if the amount is $234.75, and you want to find out what 25% off would be, you just type that in times 0.75, and you see that your total would be $176 and about six cents. So it can do quick math for you right here in Spotlight. Here's another really cool trick that Spotlight can do. It can do quick measurement or currency conversions for you. For example, let's say you want to know what $100 is in euros. It's approximately 91.62 euros. It also shows things like the British pounds or Japanese yen, Canadian dollars, Swiss francs, and so on. What if you want to do a conversion from gallons to something? How about 10 gallons? And then it shows you liters, quarts, pints, cups, and even cubic feet. It will even work with miles per hour, 75 MPH. 
shows you that 75 miles per hour is approximately 120.7 kilometers per hour. Ever since Yosemite came out last year, we can also make phone calls directly from our Mac to anyone in our contacts. For example, all I have to do is type in somebody's name that I want to call, and right there it gives me the opportunity to call via FaceTime or audio directly from my Mac without even going to contacts. Sometimes I not only need to find a file, but I also need to find out what folder it's in. And you can do this quickly with Spotlight as well. For example, let's say I want to find some business cards I made for a client named Nico Wright. All I've got to do is start typing his name. And then when I find the file, I can click on it once here and then hold the command button down. And right here at the bottom, it'll show me the path to get to that particular folder. Now, unfortunately, as soon as you let go of the command button, that disappears, but at least you can see a quick view of where that particular folder is, and then you can find it more easily. The last trick I want to show you today is how to get the results of your searches to come up in the order that you prefer. So what you do is you go up to the Apple icon and go to System Preferences, and then click on Spotlight. Here you're going to see the various categories that Spotlight is going to search to get the answers that you're requesting. Each box has a check mark by it if it's going to be included in the search. So you can check or uncheck items if you'd like them to not be included in your Spotlight search results. You can also grab any one of these and move them to a different order so that they show up earlier in the results. So for example, if you want movies to show up first, you can have it up at the top. Or if you would like Bing web searches to go to the top, you can just drag it up there as well and reorder this however you prefer. One last thing I want to show you is that if you would like for something to specifically not show up in Spotlight, you can click on privacy here and you can add folders to this list so that they don't show up in a Spotlight search result. So those are my top 10 tricks for Spotlight, but how do you use Spotlight? What features do you like best? What shortcuts have you discovered? Let me know your favorite ways to use Spotlight in the comments below. That's all I got for today. We'll talk to you more on our Facebook page, and we hope to see you in one of our upcoming live classes right here on YouTube. Now y'all get out of here. It's time for recess. Go outside and play. Class dismissed.